Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is February 9, 2023. Yesterday, the market gave us a signal to tell us to be on alert for a potential pullback. And today we got that pullback. So is now the market ready to head back up or are we uh, still going to look for the market to continue to drop? In this video, we're going to take a look at the market internal and the price action of the E-mini S&P 500 future and also the SPY and see where they are headed. So stay tuned. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, performance on the index. As you can see, the uh, uh, worst uh, performer to for the last session was the Dow Jones Transportation, lost a little bit over 2%, and the NASDAQ, the composite, and uh, also the NASDAQ 100 lost about uh, 1%, and the S&P 500 or 0.9% or so, and the Dow Jones Industrial 0.7%. Now, I guess Thinkorswim have uh, reset these two indexes here. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange composite from my other source here is uh, down 0.67% uh, and the Russell 2000 down 1.47%. Uh, so the Russell 2000 was the second worst performer for today. Now, as far as the uh, year to date is concerned, NASDAQ 100 still the uh, best performer holding on to a 13% gain and also the NASDAQ composite holding to close to 13%, 12.5% or so. Same thing with the uh, Dow Jones Transportation, 12.5%, Russell 2000, again, 3 quarter percent, S&P 500, 6.3%, New York Stock Exchange composite, 4.24%, and the uh, Dow Jones Industrial, the worst performer, 1.67% year to date. So the uh, worst performer for the week is the uh, Russell 2000 and then followed by the transportation, then the uh, NASDAQ and then the uh, S&P 500 and the New York Stock Exchange. And the best performer actually for the week is the Dow Jones Industrial. Remember last weekend's uh, video, I talked about the potential rotation from the, uh, the growth stock, the small cap and the large cap tech stock back into the defensive stock, uh, uh, then we will see the Dow Jones Industrial to outperform the S&P and also the NASDAQ, uh, which is more uh, uh, tech-oriented and growth-oriented uh, index. So we are starting to see that, although, yeah, they're still down, the Dow Jones Industrial is still down compared to everybody, but relatively, it is not down as much in terms of percentage. So uh, that's why, uh, Keep an eye on the industrial in the coming week. So far right now for the week, we are printing a, you know, inside candle on the S&P 500. And it looks like uh, it's going to be a down week until, unless something dramatically happens tomorrow. Now let's start off uh, with the intraday chart of the S&P 500 and some of the internal. You can see that the S&P 500 was actually open gap up. And then somewhere around uh, 8.15, which is 11.15, uh, pretty close to uh, into the uh, European market's uh, close, uh, we saw the up-down volume ratio turn negative, and it stayed negative uh, throughout the remaining session, and it closed with a uh, 2.8 to 1 in favor of the down volume. Now, if you notice that uh, here, the uh, uh, S&P 500 is only down... 0.8% today. Yesterday it was down uh, 1%. So uh, yesterday the uh, up down volume ratio was uh, 2 to 1 in favor of uh, uh, down volume. And today uh, it was down less in terms of percentage. And the up down volume ratio is actually uh, higher in favor of the down volume. So definitely there's a sign that the uh, selling pressure is increasing. And also in addition to that, we also noticed that the advanced decline, the daily advanced decline, Today, it was 1,410 more declining issue than advancing issue, which is more than yesterday. Yesterday, I believe that was only, uh, uh, let me see what this is. Uh, yesterday, at the end of the session, it was just a little bit over 1,000 more declining issue than advancing issue. So once again, it's a little bit more of a uh, broader downside uh, selling today. And notice that the VIX also came back into this 2030 zone and it is sitting above that uh, 20 area now. It's sitting at 20.75. And the put call ratio is still pretty much the same, somewhere around that 0.8 level above the 0.75. And there were uh, 80 uh, more 52-week uh, high than 52-week low in the New York Stock Exchange today. 
Now let's take a look at the daily uh, market internal and also the market sentiment here. You see that uh, we are seeing a pullback on the S&P 500 from today. And that was alerted to us from the uh, cumulative AD line from the New York Stock Exchange. And here, remember the uh, accumulative AD line yesterday, we were talking about negative divergence here. And while we were uh, looking at a uh, you know higher low on the closing basis for the S&P 500, and that alerted us to keep an eye out on potential pullback. So today we got that continuation uh, pullback, and right now it has resolved that negative divergence. So right now we basically are looking for further uh, downside or looking for a positive divergence to uh, give us a sign that this might be uh, pulling back up. And here's the uh, NASDAQ. The NASDAQ uh, 100 uh, closed down 0.9%. And you see that the up-down volume ratio is uh, 3 to 1 in favor of the down volume. And the daily advance decline 1,800 uh, more uh, declining issue than advancing issue. And here we see that there were uh, 67 stock make new 52 week low versus uh, 95 stock make uh, 52 week high. And here again, the cumulative AD line for the NASDAQ yesterday was also showing a uh, negative divergence. And that too was uh, telling us to look for a pullback on the NASDAQ. You know, in the Nasdaq market, and today we got that pullback, and today the uh, AD line also went down as well. So right now there are no divergences between you know uh, the uh, S and P 500 and the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line, and also the Nasdaq uh, 100 and the uh, Nasdaq AD line. Let's take a look at the E Mini S and P 500. This is the uh, market profile chart, and as you can see, today's profile have uh, repair a lot of the uh, poor structure. Remember uh, last, well, yesterday I talked about these uh, single prints here that the uh, seller weren't able to uh, come down and finish up filling the single print a couple of days ago. So you can see today it came down and filled the single print. In addition, it also came down and tagged this point of control here at 40.79 and a quarter. And here's the updated uh, market profile chart with the uh, markup of uh, today's uh, post structuring. Uh, left some single print between 41.29.75 and 41.26. And also a couple single print here between 41.10 and a half and 41.10. The uh, low and the high, the low and the high is good. So there's no poor high or poor low. So there's is the, uh, sing uh, the point of control here. At 41.16.75. So remember this uh, scene of the crime, the FOMC scene of the crime. That is the level right before the FOMC announced the latest rate hike, and it's sitting at 40.73. Keep an eye on this level here tomorrow to get tagged, and if it pushes down and dip below this level, we could see it work toward these uh, poor low down here left from January. So we might not get down to that low, but uh, definitely we could see it uh, possibly move toward these, uh, these low here. And if we go and take a look at the candlestick chart, we can see some of the levels that get pretty close to these poor low. Looking at this candlestick chart here for the E-mini S&P 500, this is a 60 minute chart. So for the upside, I'll be uh, watching to see will the price be able to get back above this balance area, break out of this balance area and get above this 41.24. If it does, then I'd be uh, watching these, uh, this uh, value area high at 41.41. And if it could get above this zone here at this uh, 41.46 and a quarter, then be uh, watching for the price to possibly make a move up toward this value area high here near the uh, 41.95.25. So that would be the upside scenario. Now for the downside, I'd be watching for the price to dip below this value area low at 40.78.75 and if it does then I'll be looking for this uh, lower range of the uh, weekly expected move and targeting this uh, lower range here somewhere around 40.49 and a quarter and if it break to this lower range then I'll be uh, watching for the price to work toward this uh, uh, point of control this composite point of control near 39.86.50 now if you notice remember we saw this uh, uh, the uh, FOMC scene of the crime, which is 4073. So if it gets into this lower range of the uh, weekly expected move, 
that basically have taken out that FOMC uh, scene of the crime level, and we be watching it to uh, come down. You know the uh, the January low, some of the January lows. So we'll be watching for those to get taken out. Looking at the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500 on this uh, 60 minute chart. Now here's all the uh, scenario that I'll be uh, watching for tomorrow. So if the uh, price is able to get above this uh, big uh, balance area and get back above this uh, 407.98, so basically somewhere around that 408 level. And if it could move up and get above this 409.72, this low volume zone, then look for this value area high at 411.43 as a potential target and depending on the momentum and see would it be able to carry up toward this value area high at 417. Now on the downside, I'd be watching for the price to break below this value area low at 405.85 and if it break below this uh, value area low, then I'll look for the price to come in to this lower range of the expected move and look for this 402.50 as one of the target and if it cut to this lower range then I'd be watching for the next uh, point of control, the virgin point of control near 400 and see what it get tagged and when it does then look for the downside momentum to push it toward this composite point of control near the uh, 395.53. So those are the scenarios that I will be watching for the SPY and the uh, ES. I hope you find this video to be useful and informative. If you are new to this channel, be sure to click on the subscribe to subscribe to this channel. And also be sure to smash that thumbs up to help me promote this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.